you know, I, I really feel that way. I mean, there's such a small group of people that really steal headfish and care about it compared to the over, you know, the general population. It's just like people in New York freak out about uh, the whales. You know, when the whales are in jeopardy because they don't have the food or whatever, the New York Times can put an article about the whales. And, that, and you know, uh, not everybody, but a lot of people go, oh my God, the whales are, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they get some traction. The New York Times can write an article about steelhead and not near as many People will go, oh my God, the steelhead out in the West Coast are hurting. You know, it's just, it's just a fact of life. Most people don't feel like I do. Can you describe for the people that don't know anything about steelhead, why that fish is so special when you hold it? It's special because it starts that big and some little crook maybe only that wide and it goes all the way down stream to the ocean it's 500 miles to the ocean right down here on the corner and then it goes who knows where japan or wherever in the ocean with all the different things that want to eat it when it gets in the ocean it's got all the ocean predators plus the commercial fishing plus contaminated water with nuclear energy plus everything else and it comes all the way back and comes right back to that same little natal trickle that's what to me makes them special a lot of people that don't fish or know about steelhead confuse it with salmon oh i'm sure so, I so for those people what is the difference between salmon and steelhead well, the salmon dies after it spawns for the first thing. But to be honest, I don't give a rip about salmon. <laughs> I saw that steelhead caught in the American River and I was instantly in love. And then I met a girl that was from a place where there was steelhead and I was instantly in love. The first time I ever went steelhead fishing within 30 minutes, we were down in the stink hole. The guy that took me lived right there. And we drove down on the bank. I had a 12 foot car top boat, the John boat. We had a rock for an anchor and he was a big guy and he was up in front and he tied this loop bottle on that anchor. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, well, if we hook a fish, I can just pull a slip knot and we can follow the fish down the river. It was still free flowing at that point and then we can find our anchor. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. So he had a big rod and a trout rod, and I had a big rod and a trout rod. He starts rigging up his trout rod. And so I'm like, what the hell? So I, I had a seven and a half foot eagle claw back rod and a six pound test trilene on a quick 330. So I rigged that up and I put a little bright red hot shot on about that big and I flipped it out there. We'd been fishing about 15 or 20 minutes and my rod went wham. And he's up in the front pulling his magic slip knot. He should have been kicked out of Boy Scouts. He's up there and the boat's violently rocking. This is a John boat, it's only got sides, you know. And I thought we were gonna ship water. And he's cussing and jerking the rope, but never did come loose. And that fish hit going downstream and it never stopped. It made one run. I got the drag set for six pound test. I had like probably 95 yards. You know, I had good tackle. I had my finger on the spool as much as I thought I could. I wanted that fish bad. One run. <sighs> and spooled, you know, spooled me and took the hot shot. That was my introduction to clear water steelhead fish.